Hello, uh, good morning, welcome to today's webinar. Um, so my name's Ian Harris from Search Laboratory. Thank you for attending. Um, today's webinar is all about attribution and why now is the time to upgrade your enterprise attribution model. Um, just a few housekeeping things before we start. So the webinar is going to last around 30 minutes. There will be time at the end for some questions, so time after that for questions. If you do have a question, there is a question box. Uh, it says type message here uh, on the right in the little go to webinar panel. So if you've got any questions at all, please type them in there and we will answer them at the end. So um, yeah, any questions you want to ask about attribution, please, please uh, fire them in there. So, um, so yeah, my name is Ian Harris. Today's webinar is all about attribution, and this is the this is what we'll be going through today. Um, let me just get rid of that. So, um, yeah, you, today you're going to understand. Um, all about attribution and specifically data-driven attribution, how it works and what to do with it. So we're going to go through uh, what attribution is, why now, and then we're going to go through a deep dive into the value of attribution. I'm going to explain attribution in a way that hopefully you will never have been explained uh, before. Um, so I've sort of unpicked it from the ground up and I'm going, to, I'm going to show you a kind of a theoretical case study and then some live case studies on what you can actually do with this technology and then some instructions on what you can do next and how do you prepare for um, actually making these changes. Um, so first of all, just a few things about Search Laboratory. So Search Laboratory are a, a digital marketing company. We're also one of only six UK based Google Analytics 360 resellers. So that's the that's the paid version of Google Analytics. Uh, we're, we're very into analytics and digital strategy and we work with many large enterprises. Uh, here's some of the examples um, and we work with them on their digital channels, advising them on digital strategy and attribution and, and all the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, so first of all, what is it? What is attribution? Well, attribution has been around for some time. We've seen reports like this in analytics, and we've known for some time that the channels uh, interact, that different marketing channels interact to deliver conversions. So we, we see this kind of picture, but attribution is the science of assigning credit to those marketing touch points uh, that a customer was exposed to prior to their purchase. So ju just to be clear, it is a science. So it's a, it's a numbers, it's a data-based science of assigning credit. It is not um, choosing some predefined model. It's not guesswork, it's backed up by data. Um, why now? Why are we talking about this now? Why are we getting quite excited about this now? Um, well, cross-channel measurement and attribution is the number one tactic that occupies digital marketers' time. This is from a, a recent survey by Google. Lots of people are interested in how these channels interact. 81% of marketers want to know more about attribution, so uh, presumably why you're attending uh, this webinar now. Um, but a couple of key things have happened. Firstly, analytics has got very good. So um, analytics now measures all touch points within a single analytics platform. So even views, so even views of display advertising where people don't even visit your site, we can now see that through analytics practice platforms. We can see cross device. So that, that was a, a huge hole in, in uh, attribution modeling before, but we can now see cross device activity. So people searching on a phone and converting on a, on a desktop. Uh, but the other thing is the maths behind data driven attribution, and I'll talk through that shortly. Um, has got very good and very accessible. You don't need to understand how the maths works, but uh, just to know that this is being built in 
to um, lots of certainly lots of Google platforms, and it's be, it's just becoming very very accessible. Um, so now is now is a really good time. Um, so the value of attribution. So what's wh why do we want to do this? Why do we want to understand these touch points? Um, I'm going to explain this in a way that kind of unpicks the value of, of attribution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it using um, a, a, a trivial example. So an example of a new e-commerce site. So this is this is an existing shop so this shop sells I don't know skateboards or, or or whatever it is and this is a this is a shop that has existed on the high street but they've just got a new online presence and and they're trying PPC for the first time so it's a it's a simple example I'm keeping it simple to start with um, so I'm going to walk through an example of what happens with their PPC campaign and then I'm going to show you how attribution is is applied to that so do strap yourselves in and, and and close your email because if you can understand this, if you can understand what I'm going to go through right now, you'll understand attribution forever, and you'll start to you'll start to realise the power of this and what you need to do with it. Um, so this shop runs PPC, it runs it for the first time, and these are the results that that they achieve. So the first thing to notice is that um, this shop, they're, they're quite sensible in the PPC campaign. They've split out generics from brand and they're t treating them as two separate, two separate campaigns. So PPC generics, their keywords like skateboards, skateboard helmets, uh, skateboard wheels, whatever it might be. And then PPC brand, that is the brand, that is the shop. So that is Bob's skateboard or whatever the, the shop is called. So that's people searching for this actual retailer. And these are the results that they get. So um, in this particular month where they start PPC, uh, I've kept the numbers very simple. Uh, PPC generics, they get 100,000 impressions, 100,000 people searching for skateboards, wheels, whatever it might be. And, and on those 100,000, uh, impressions, they've got a click-through rate of 5%, meaning that they get 5,000 clicks. So that's a fairly normal click-through rate. Um, they achieve 5,000 clicks. The conversion rate, so the conversion to sale on those clicks is 2%. So therefore, 2% of 5,000, they get 100 sales. So they've got 100 sales in this particular month. The profit on each sale is 150 pounds so maybe the average order is 200 pounds and the cost of the goods is 50 pounds so the profit per sale is 150 pounds the cost per click so the cost for each of those 5000 clicks is a pound okay so we can see that overall gross profit is 100 times 150 so 100 sales at 150 pounds so that's 15,000 pounds but the cost of the AdWords is 5,000 clicks at a pound per click so the cost is 5,000 pounds so overall net profit is 10,000 pounds so they're doing well out of this PPC generics campaign and then the brand campaign they have received a thousand impressions. So while it's a new website, it is an existing shop. So people have heard of Bob skateboards and uh, some people are searching. So a thousand impressions, thousand people searching, they get a decent click through rate because they are Bob skateboards. So they get 10% uh, click through rate, fairly normal, a uh, hundred clicks therefore, the conversion rate on the brand campaign, because people know what they're looking for, is 10%. So therefore, they're getting 10 sales off this brand campaign. Again, profit per sale is £150. Cost per click is very cheap. There's no one else bidding on Bob skateboards. Um, so overall, they get 10 sales at £150. That's 1,500 gross profit cost is 10 pounds so that's um, 
100 clicks at 10 pence, that's 10 pounds, and therefore overall net profit is 1,490. And therefore the whole campaign looks like this. They've got an overall net profit of 11,490. So they're doing pretty well. Um, so the next thing that they try is some display advertising. So they think they're gonna give this a try. They turn their PPC off and they start a display advertising campaign. So they do some programmatic prospecting. They start showing Bob Skateboard's ads all over the internet on, on different websites, the Daily Mail, wherever. Um, okay, so, and this is what happens. So they, they get pretty good coverage. They get a million impressions. Um, the click-through rate on those impressions is 0.05%. That's a fairly typical click-through rate for a, a, a programmatic prospecting campaign. Therefore, they get 500 clicks. Um, the conversion rate is, is generally not that good on, the, um, on programmatic uh, display advertising, uh, certainly prospecting. So we've put that at 1%. Therefore, on those 500 clicks, they get five sales. Again, profit per sale is £150, but the cost of that advertising, cost per thousand impressions, CPM, is £1. Okay, so £1, a million impressions, the overall cost is £1,000. So gross profit of five sales at £150 is £750. The cost is £1,000, so overall net profit, they've lost money. They've lost money. They've lost 250 pounds. Uh, so there's the summary at the top. So with this programmatic display campaign, looking at that in isolation, any marketer worth their salt would have a look at that and say, that is losing money. I need to turn it off or I need to do something fairly drastic with it to get it into profit. Um, so that's that's not rocket science we're losing money um turn it off however um we know that display campaigns such as this are not necessarily there to produce a direct response to get direct sales so we always talk about programmatic prospecting doing this other thing which is branding reach awareness this kind of thing this woolly thing that we we kind of think is happening but we can never quite define so what we're saying is the channels are interacting so if they're only doing display and ppc and that's the only marketing they're doing the display is going to have some sort of effect some sort of branding effect that is going to affect what is happening elsewhere now we never know what this effect is, but what I'm going to do now in this particular example is I'm going to tell you what the effect is. I'm going to tell you the effect of the display advertising on the other advertising that they're doing. And the only other advertising that they're doing is PPC advertising. So I'm going to, I'm going to describe exactly what, what effect that's having. So the first effect that display advertising is going to have is it's going to increase the click-through rate on the PPC generics and it's going to increase it by five percent. So what's happening here is people are seeing adverts by Bob Skateboards, they're seeing those all over the internet and therefore when they search for something like skateboards or some make of skateboard or whatever it is, they feel as if they know Bob Skateboard, so they got some affinity to the brand, and therefore the click-through rate on those ads is going to increase very slightly. So that's plus five percent. That's a very small increase on the click-through rate. The second thing that's going to happen, that I'm going to tell you, is going to happen, is that the brand search is going to increase. So in other words, people have seen these adverts all over the internet. They feel a bit of familiarity with Bob Skateboards and there's going to be a slight uptick in people searching for Bob Skateboards online. The other thing that will happen 
is that when they come to the website, because they have some sort of affinity to the brand, because they've seen it all over the place, they think Bob Skateboards is bigger than it actually is, the conversion rate on both generics and brand clicks is going to increase again a very small amount so they're going to increase by five percent so i am telling you you never know this information you're never given this information but i am telling you that is the effect of this display campaign and what we'll do now is we'll have a look at what that does to the what that does to the numbers and then we're going to go and have a look at what what the numbers appear like in some real campaigns okay so with bob skateboards this is the effect of the display advertising on the ppc campaign so this is our ppc campaign as it was so this these are the numbers exactly as they were before when we ran the ppc in isolation but running the campaigns together so the effect of the display campaign is first of all that the PPC generics click-through rate is going to increase by 5%. So instead of being 5% there, that's going to go up to 5.25%. So it's 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 only 5% increase on the 5%. So it's a very small increase. So you can see that number changing. It's gone from 5% to 5.25%, meaning that they get 250 more clicks. The other impact then is that the PPC brand search, so the PPC brand campaign, is going to see an uptick of 5%. So instead of getting uh, 1,000 impressions, we're going to get 1,050 impressions, and therefore we get five more clicks. So you can see that effect in the, in the table below. And then the final effect is that the uh, conversion rate on both PPC generics and PPC brand goes up. So the conversion rates go from 2% and 10% to 2.1% um, and 10.5%. So we get slightly more sales. Okay, so if we, if we follow those numbers through, we can see the effect on the gross profit of these campaigns. So the gross profit goes from 15,000 on the PPC generics up to 16 and a half, and then the cost goes up slightly, and then you can see the net profit overall increases. So there's a 12 and a half percent uplift in net profit on the PPC campaign as a whole, because we're running, um, because we're running the display advertising. So that's pretty significant. We're making much, we're making more profit. Um, however, if we look at the campaigns, if we look at these campaigns in isolation, we, we can still see, so these are the new numbers. We can still see that the PPC generics, well, they're making a bit more money now. Um, so they got a decent ROI. The PPC brand's making a bit more money very good ROI, the display is still losing money. So if we look on a last click basis, display is still losing money. Now, unless we know that that display was having that 5% uptick on all those metrics, again, we would turn that display off. And if we turn the display off, we're going to lose the uptick that we that we achieved on PPC generics and PPC brand. And if we look in normal analytics, that would be a sensible decision because we would not know what happened, what, what the effect of that display was on the PPC campaigns. But really, you know, in 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 the in real terms, that uptick on on um on the PPC generics really should not go to the PPC campaign. It should be attributed to the display campaign because it's the display that was having that effect on the PPC. So the real numbers should look like this. And therefore, the true ROI of the campaigns should look like this. So overall, you know, if we compare last click ROI, of both campaign, campaigns together to the true ROI or the data-driven ROI, we can see that we should be 
downplaying the PBC generics and brand by 9% and uplifting the display by 220%. Now, unless we knew that effect in advance, we would never see that number. We would never know that that was happening. Now, the only way to see these numbers is to use uh, some data-driven attribution modeling system. So, in other words, we I told you these, I told you these upticks, but a, a system is not going to tell you that. But what, what we do have access to now in many of the Google tools and also other tools available is we have access to the following um, the following kind of um, systems, so the following maths. So this is this is how data-driven attribution works. So what data-driven attribution does is it it looks at paths to conversion and paths to non-conversion, and it analyzes every single path uh, within analytics. And it says, okay, in this particular example, we've got a path which is search. So someone does a search, uh, they get then get an email, they're followed up with an email, and we see a 2% likelihood to purchase. If we see that path in analytics, we add up all the paths that convert and all the paths that don't, we see a 2% conversion rate. What the system then does, does is it looks at other paths and it compares with other paths. So in this case, there's a there's paths with a display click uh, or a display view in between search and email. And it looks at all those paths and let's say it analyzes all of those paths and it sees a 3% likelihood of purchase. So 3% conversion rate. What the system will then do is it will say that that display um, click in the middle of that path increased the likelihood of purchase by 50%. And that is the basis of how data-driven attribution works. It's, it's basically a system, it looks at all converting paths, all non-converting paths, and it looks at paths with and without certain uh, clicks, certain channels uh, uh, in, in those paths. And it looks at what the impact is of those channels um, on, that, on that journey. So, this this is an actual report from a from a client so this is an actual report that compares and you can see here last interaction so this is the last interaction the last click model with the data driven model okay so this this has done all the maths it said okay uh, look at paths with and without these channels and uh, what are those channels actually worth? What are, what, what are each of those channels actually worth? And the one that I want to point out to you down here is the display. So in this particular case, display should be uplifted by 270%. Now, if you remember in my trivial example where we had those 5% upticks, the change in ROI was 220% on the display. So actually, when we compare my trivial example with this live example, we can see that my 5% were probably underestimated. So in this particular example, we've got 270%, and this is proper data from a, from a client. In this one, we've got display underestimated by just under 2,000%, and that's, and the last, this, the models it's, it's comparing is last non-direct click with the data-driven model, 2,000%. In this one, 480%. These are all light. These are all, you know, proper data from, from clients. In this particular one, 4,000%. So, um, so you can see that the, the data-driven attribution is actually, and, and display advertising is one of the big reasons for using display uh, data-driven attribution, because we never really know the value of display. It does this thing that we find it very hard to measure. So it does this sort of awareness thing, which is not a last click thing. It does this awareness and branding thing that we find very hard to measure. Um, but using data-driven attribution, you can actually see the exact value. I've got 
I've got another live example now that I just I'll just walk through because this is a very powerful example. It's not a, it's not even a display example. So what this what this is a, an example of is this this was a PPC campaign that we're running for a client and this client sells as you can see it's got campaigns around dresses, bridesmaid stuff, tops, footwear. So you can see it's a fashion client. And these, this is a PPC campaign. So this is a paid search campaign. And you can see that, that with each of these campaigns, uh, we're running, um, you know, we're spending this much and on a last AdWords click basis. So, in other words, if we look in our in our AdWords accounts, we will see that these campaigns are doing okay. Okay, the top ones just about breaking even, but the other campaigns are in profit. Okay, so that on the face of it, they look good. But when we look at data driven, so when we get Google Google's data driven tools to analyze that data, um, we see that the data driven tool is actually downplaying it's saying actually you thought you were making 4800 you're only making 1900 on that particular campaign so actually these campaigns are losing money so this is this is an example of the google tools telling us that that the google spend the the adwords spend is not working for us now when we look into this in detail so when we looked into these campaigns in detail to see what's happening um, a lot of these campaigns were actually very heavy on RLSA so RLSA is where people have visited the website before and then when they do a search for dresses or tops or whatever it might be we bid up on those particular people on those audiences and we are getting it you know on the face of it a decent return but what data-driven attribution is telling us is that actually in most in a lot of cases we would have got that sale anyway we did not need to bid so high we did not need to buy that click at that price so our response to this was to severely cut our budget that we were spending on RLSA in this particular case. And what we did was we pulled back dramatically on the budget that we're spending on RLSA and then put it elsewhere. We put it actually into um, lookalike targeting. So people that looked like our, um, our good customers, our converters. The overall effect of that was as follows so march and april uh we were running uh the old way uh, going very heavy uh, going very heavy on rlsa and at the end of april we changed the targeting so we pulled back dramatically and started increasing the bids putting that money into other areas but you can see we massively cut down we actually halved our spend on adwords but if you look at the effect you can see 522 conversions, 445 conversions, that jumps up to 916 conversions um, with a dramatically reduced spend. Cost per acquisition drops dramatically, gross profit jumps dramatically, and overall ROI jumps dramatically. There is some seasonality in this, but when we remove seasonality by looking at all the other channels, we reckon the overall increase in ROI on the paid on their paid activity was around about 250 percent and that was a con conservative estimate so I mean this is this is a real live example of the power of data-driven attribution if you get this right and it's not just about and I think this this case um, illustrates it, it it really well it's not just about looking at these chat not looking at your reports and then guessing it's looking at the report it's digging into why you think that's happening and then it's and then it's adjusting your budgets accordingly and you can see the sort of impact that you can have and again this was the impact on a pet on the paid search channel this is not you know this is not um display or branding or any of that stuff so really really powerful um the tools that enable you to do this so these are the google tools um 
So data-driven attribution is actually available right now in Google AdWords. So it's available in Google AdWords out of the box. It's available in double click. And it's also available in Google Analytics 360. It's not available in standard Google Analytics. Okay, so if you want to do data-driven data attribution in analytics, you, you need the, the paid version of analytics. And there's also two new tools coming out. They're not out yet, but uh, Google Attribution, Attribution 360. Attribution is a free tool, and then Attribution 360 is the paid version of that tool. And all of these tools to date, do data-driven attribution, but the way that, the, the way that they differ is by what data they, they will actually analyze. So, for example, Google AdWords, the only thing that Google AdWords can actually see is pay-per-click and the Google Display Network. So, that's the only, they're the only channels that, that Google AdWords will perform data-driven attribution on. It, it won't, you know, it won't look at your email marketing, it won't look at your um, your other display advertising or your natural search or any of that stuff. And likewise, double click. So double click will uh, attribute um, all your, anything that's managed to double click. So display advertising, it will attribute uh, display impressions, not just, not just clicks. Um, so it's, it's pretty advanced, but again, it, it it won't attribute anything it can't see. So it won't do the likes of uh, natural search. Um, Google Analytics 360, <clears throat> Google Analytics 360 will attribute everything that it can see and it can see uh, most things. So it will link to double click so it can do views, uh, it can do cross device, um, it can do all your AdWords, it can obviously do any traffic that comes to the website, so natural search, um, all of that stuff. Um, and then Attribution, Attribution 360 will again, um, they, they, they're not actually out yet, so we, we, you know, we, we see betas of these tools. But um, attribution will will attribute anything um, apart from some of the double click stuff. So attribution 360 will attribute absolutely everything, and it's got some more advanced tools in there, like forecasting tools. So you can do things like, uh, okay, I'm spending, I don't know, ten thousand pound a month on um, on um, display right now what if I spend 20,000 a month you know it's got a kind of forecasting uh, system in there so all of these systems apart from the, the the two at the bottom right those systems are available right now so you can do data-driven attribution right now so what do you need to do what should you be doing right now so the first thing is uh, just sort your analytics. Make sure analytics is set up correctly. Um, it's measuring. Uh, it's measuring correctly. You're not double counting anything. You know, have a, just have a good audit of your analytics, and and make sure within analytics that you. We call them modeling event types, but the, it, it's basically the channels. Make sure your channels are measuring what you want to measure. So, for example. Paid search, as, as a really good example, should be split into brand and non-brand because they are they should be dealt with as, as entirely separate channels. <clears throat> Someone searching for generics, you know, things like skateboards or dresses or whatever it might be, is is different to people searching for your brand. They should be dealt with separately. Now, if you tag them up separately in analytics, you'll start gathering data on those. You can't backdate this stuff. So you need to you need to sort this so that you can start gathering data and then start attributing those channels correctly. Uh, likewise, display advertising that, you know, um, pro, uh, prospecting display and remarketing should be dealt with as two separate channels because they're entirely different things. So, so you should be seeing those as separate channels in your in your analytics. Um, if you if you've got offline conversions, so if you're a B two B site, um, then really you should be tying up your uh, offline conversions into analytics. So, you know, don't don't be um, 
don't be optimizing for uh, leads, you know, just uh, not all leads are equal. You need to be optimizing for, um, for actual sales or pipeline value. Um, we've got, we did a, a, a webinar, we've got a video on our website that, that covers some of this stuff and how you do that. So do get that right. And, and just finally get attributing. There really is right now no excuse for for not doing this you you have to the tools are there um don't don't guess at one of the models you know don't, you shouldn't be using a u shape or a you know a, a time decay or any of that stuff they might be better than than last click but but if if the data is there you should be using data driven attribution right now so in summary it's here um Data-driven attribution is here. It's built into the tools. It's accessible. Um, the one caveat I would say to that is to, to use data-driven attribution, you do need data. So you need, um, there's some metrics around that, you know, how many conversions you need. I think it's about 400 conversions a month that you need to make the, the data work. But if you're beyond that, you really should be using this. And it will, it will change the way that you do your marketing. Um, you will make more money. If you do this then your competitors don't, um, then you will have the edge. You will, you will start to dominate. So please do it. Um, okay, so that's, that's it. Um, if there are any questions, please type them in the box. We have a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, I'll leave the contact details on the screen. Um, so um, please do get in touch. And if there's any questions, either uh, type them in now or um, or later. So or contact us later. So let me just go through some questions. Um, so one question: How? How does the attribution tracking account for someone crossing device, i.e. mobile to desktop? Okay, so the way this works in, in the Google tools is it uses logged in data. So Google knows um, that as long as you're logged in on your phone and you're logged in on your laptop, it will tie those two sessions together. So you're in, Google is encouraging you all the time to log in. Not everybody is logged in. So um, if you actually look in um, in AdWords reporting now, it actually does um, cross device tracking. So for the data that it doesn't know, it makes assumptions and it reckons it is within 10% accurate. Uh, it's, it's using a 10% accuracy. So there are lots of people logged in. So that's, it's as simple as that. That's how it does it. It, it uses logged in data. Um, okay. So what, I've got a question here. What about assigning profit and cost to non-e-commerce conversions? So what's the best pipeline value measure, e.g. with a 12 month time to purchase? Okay, so this question is, uh, clearly about uh, you know someone who may be B two B, so they they're gaining conversions and they um, those conversions are probably leads. Those leads are followed up by a sales team. Um, that sales team chases the lead. It might be a good lead, a bad lead. It might get a conversion value against it, a pipeline value against it. It might get a win percent or percentage against it. So there's really good links now between systems like Salesforce and analytics. Even if you're using a bespoke uh, CRM, uh, we have, we've linked uh, analytics with with even bespoke CRMs but if you're using Salesforce it links out of the box to analytics 360 and then what happens is that link is is built and then as that lead progresses through the CRM so let's say the win percentage changes or we get a value a conversion value against that that uh, opportunity um, those events are passed back to analytics and then you can start to you can start to optimize for opportunity value rather than just 
um, lead numbers. So, you know, just some notional value of a lead. Or indeed, you can you can optimize for one sales. So, you know, when the sale is one within the CRM, that would be passed back to analytics. So all of this is really doable now. Um, okay, so I've got another question. So the example of displays contribution are impressive. Could I ask if they are factored in click-based conversions alone from display or view-based conversions as well? So, so that's a good question. So um, within the views that we saw in analytics, they were click-based conversions. So they were looking at a last, so they were comparing with a, a last click model. Um, when we look at the data-driven attribution, that looks at the entire contribution of display. So analytics can see, or certainly Google Analytics 360 can see views, it can see clicks, it can see all of that journey. But when we're, when we're comparing with a last click model, then it is looking at the last click. So the, the conundrum with display is that you you really get two ends of a spectrum within analytics you you on a last click basis you get a very poor value of display because it looks at how many direct conversions you get um, from the clicks um, whereas you look at something like double click and that will report how many view through conversions so in other words how many people saw your ad and then at some point in the future converted whether that view of the ad had anything to do with it at all so you get these two hugely differing numbers whereas what we see in data driven attribution is it's sorting all that out for you it's looking at the absolute value of views of clicks of all of that stuff and um and it will yeah it will basically sort it out for you and tell you the exact the exact value um okay let's just have a look at this one what are your views on accurate attribution in a post gdpr world oh my word so someone's asking gdpr so i i'm not i can't give advice on gdpr but the thing that i can say is that with um all of this all of this is anonymous so within analytics um all of this all you cannot see users you cannot see personal data against these users so assuming that you're not doing anything um anything crazy like you know storing any logged in data within your analytics um and, and you shouldn't be doing any of that stuff then um you know storing email addresses in urls or anything like that we, we have seen people doing that uh then um that you should be fine but again i just qualify that with um i'm i'm not a, a uh, i'm not a lawyer uh, i have to say that um okay just having a look at the time so if we got a chance for one more question um so final question how much is Google Analytics 360. So 360. So just to remind you, 360 is the paid version of of Google Analytics. Um, GA 360 has got this data driven attribution stuff built in. Standard Analytics does not have it built in. The cost of Google Analytics 360 is I can't answer that question. I'm afraid that it it depends on how many hits you've got, how many hits are going to your website. Uh, it depends on how many websites you're actually tracking um, it there's a huge range I can give you a cost immediately uh, if if you contact us and uh, I'll ask you a few questions and then I can give you a cost immediately so I'm not trying to be elusive it, it just does range uh, you know there's a huge range depending on the nature of your of your website um, that is there's some good questions there that is all we've got time for um there's some other questions i've seen coming in apologies i will we'll get back to people individually uh on the other questions so um thanks to everyone who's who's asked uh questions but we do have to go now please get in contact uh, my name's ian harris um 
the phone number is there um, there's our email address so thank you very very much for attending the webinar and uh, hopefully speak soon